All right, here we are in court, baby. All right. Court is now a session. Oh, wait, hold on. A judge voice. Court is now a session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. As always, silence is always. I'm calmer. Still being quiet. Review well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Man, he just don't care. He literally just got his eye closed. Why are you clutching your arm so much? Uh, 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 just a uh, angry old man. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so. Uh, not so fast, judge. Oh, you were just waiting. I'm gonna get on Von Karma every time. I don't, I, I don't like this guy. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Oh, meaningful. Right of course. A prediction. Today, trial will end three minutes. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait. Today, trial will end three minutes from now. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah. Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Uh, right. Call my witness. My the safest witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat owner. Yeah, the caretaker guy. Oh, well, this is... Yeah. You won't be sleep on the stand. Witness, state your perfection. You sleep. Oh, yeah, you woke up. No, no, no. Uh, I uh, I am the uh, proprietor of the restaurant, the Wet Noodle at Gorda Lake. <laughs> uh, uh, and I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you was in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Uh, hmm, wait a second. We still haven't heard this old guy is. Yeah, raise an objection. We don't know who he is. Objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask Mr. Wright. Bah. I have put it to this trial within in three minutes. You are hindering my my time. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, right. Jeez. This witness will state his name. Ugh. Mm. Uh, uh. I'm not really sure. Uh, you, you don't know your name is. Uh, what do you mean? My uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness did not remember anything beyond the last several years. Where have you heard that before? Uh huh. We heard that in the last in the, in the investigation. So this guy is probably that yogi guy, yogi guy, uh, what was his name? Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm. He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. I'm sorry, I'm developing a little bit of a hiccup. Oh, very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we witness? Okay. Night of the murder. It, it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep, yep. Yeah. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Or make wet noodles, what have you. Noodles, boats. Then I heard a bang. Uh, yep, I did. It was a bell bang. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just uh, floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. So you heard the bang first, and then you went out and looked, and you, and you that's when you, you saw the other bang. Okay, gotcha. Just then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. A oh, man. Hmm. Very well, I like to begin the cross examination. What now, bro? What are you objection to? There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there's only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. 
Judge, you verdict. Now, what the... There's no way this guy is a real prosecutor. There's no way that will fly in any court. Fiction or non-fiction? It, has to, it, it can't be. Uh, yes, just Mr. Wright. Cross the you goddamn right. It's my it's my rights as a as a as a lawyer. What are you saying? Of course, I'll cross examine the witness. Hmm. Very well. You may begin. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Von Kalmer. Are you okay? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then let's just take our time. May cross the same the witness. But what is wrong with that guy? He is not right. He just, just, just I don't know, he freaked out. Nah, okay. That's <laughs> my throat. <laughs> Alright, it was uh the night of the twenty fourth just at the midnight. I yep. Uh, okay. I was in the restaurant when I uh you didn't even pull okay. Let's just press everything. <laughs> just after midnight you say. Uh yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Uh, yep, yep, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Are you going back to sleep, buddy? I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Uh, <laughs> Don't glare at me like that. Uh, I uh, I remember it was clearly I I did. I yep. I yep. You see, to tell you. And I was in a restaurant where I uh, usually rent boats as usual, or what noodling uh, boats noodles. Uh, is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I I guess Polly could. You bird. Th that's not good enough for a court of law, Mr. Wright. Exactly was not good enough. Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. Uh, a, a parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? The prosecution can see that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Hmm. That was the uh, rather. Surprise and objection. Okay. Damn, let me speak, bro. Let me do my job. Huh. Then I heard a bang. A yup. A yup. And where did the bang come... Come from? Seemed to come from. The first one. From the leg, I figured. Are you certain? I yup. Good. Continue. Hmm. When I looked outside the window, I saw a boat just floating along the lake. You saw a boat. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Uh, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yep. At the time, that is. At the time. Then I heard an oh wait, wait wait. Uh, then I heard another bang. That's the second one. So you heard two gunshots total. Uh yep. Yeah. That's what Lada said in her testimony yesterday. Uh sure she did. Uh let me take a look at her testimony. Lada that's the addition. I heard two. Sh I heard two. Sh I heard two sound like gunshots just after midnight on twelve twenty five. That's what um. It's, there's a lot of depositions say and oh we have a photograph of the murder scene i didn't even realize we do uh, let's take a look uh, from further ex uh, examination you just see one bully wound entry wound from the elevator doors and yeah and you can see where they hit damn file an incident oh in a case file okay hold on Read this. Case summary. Date 12-28-2001. Location elevator district courthouse. Air in elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incident. No clues was found on the scene. Victim data. Gregory Edgeworth, age 35. 
Defense attorney trapped in the elevator returning from a lost trial with son, Mile Edgeworth, age number nine. One bullet found in the heart. The murder fire uh, the murder weapon was fired twice. Uh suspect that a Yanni Yogi, age 37, court bailiff. Trapped in the elevator with the the edge worst memory loss due to oxygen depravity after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. <gasps> what? Polly Jenkins? Like the bird? Wow. That sucks. That sucks. Okay. I um okay, just keep going. And just about then the boats come back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window. I up by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick. Uh, yep, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Yes, it is. Tisk, tisk, tisk. What are you tisking about? I have a bad feeling about this. He got something up his sleeve. That man was a defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Get some more about this. Uh, are you sure? Are you going back to sleep? Wake up. Uh oh. The, the dead. Dead certain keys? Oh. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by too. Oh, sure. So. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Ah, oh, you fell over. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like decisive evidence. Indeed, I see no room for doubt. Mm. Grand Calmer. He lured me into the cross examination so he can set me up for a fail. Uh, look at him, smug smile, you smug bastard. Nick, Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this whole trial is going to be over. Uh, wait an exception. Objection, damn it. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright. Are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Yes, exactly. That is easily explainable. No, you just not. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. But there's already sets of prints on it. Why? 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 erase the left uh the right hand and then keep the left hand that don't make no sense you're ignoring the truth of the matter here everything in a witness's testimony is true hmm the justice lost in thought which i do raise another objection your honor objection this witness claimed that edgeworth said i can't believe he's dead but his word is all we have if he was telling a lie what now Mr. Wright, not obje object to me. In a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you have his testimony is a lie, you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Erk. Nick, do you have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Call me up. We need. Next need you. I need you. We all need you. Tisk tisk tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high of expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Uh, he's sleeping on stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. Uh, no. Huh. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. 
Guilty, oh my goodness. No. The accused was surrendered to the court immediately to be held pretend, uh, pending trial at a court more than a month from today's date. That's all. This court is adjourned. Wow. Well, shit. What? Well, well, wait, wait, wait. Who's that? Stop me. Uh, who was that just now? Me. Who's me? Huh? What? Who? It's Larry. What the? Fuck? <laughs> Yeah. That's Larry, what the fuck? What are you doing? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I I was I was there in the part in the night in the murder. No, uh, what the? I I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But but it was, I remembered it today. I remember. Remember what? The gunshot. I heard it too. You heard it. He was there. Larry, when you you uh, this is, when something stinks, it's usually the butts. Am I right? Oh my God! Order, order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did a gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience, listening to the testimony. Then I realized something. He was says. He said it was something different from what I remember. Now, anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right. I'll testify. Let me let me testify, damn it. Let me, 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 let me. Order, order. Well, oh, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Oh, I love it. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Let me give him this, this final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. <laughs> Miss Edge was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You are right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here or right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. But what is this? What is this? I guess I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. I like that opinion, Judge. I like that opinion. You go ahead, Judge. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call the new witness to testify. Now, what? The court would adjourn for five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. God damn it, Larry, you, you saved the day. Court is adjourned. Oh boy, Jesus, that was a doozy, man, was it, whew, that was too close, yeah it was, sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth, huh, I've seen worse, yeah right Edgeworth, you're sweating bullocks, <clears throat> I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there, Larry was at the lake at that night. Yeah. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Alright. And he found the balloon and the t air tank that night. Yeah. Got something to say, Edgy? Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's nothing. Hmm? Um, uh, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Uh, why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. You did pick it up, though, right? What happened? You gotta tell us, like, literally what happened. Awesome. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. 
Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat right in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. Alright. I didn't have a reason really. And you used your right hand too. You picked it up with your right hand. I see. Right. What's up? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma had only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trial? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the courts. And that someone is Larry. Oh, what are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We milked this all out for all this work. Hey, it's 15 minutes, 15. Everything's on Larry now. All right, Larry, I need you to just be yourself. Just just be yourself. Don't don't try to, uh, don't say nothing smart. <clears throat> just be yourself. Of course, now back in section. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this up for me. I need you to tell me everything that you know. Okay, Larry, I hate to admit it, but you are our last chance. My karma didn't even have time to prep this witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being a big break. All right, now the murder. Let's go. Phew. That night, that night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and uh, I, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. There was no boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. You were home. That was an unusually vague testimony even for the court, and there was no boat out on the lake. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes. But you heard a gunshot, though, when you got back from the, the lake. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we come this far. There's no way to get go but forward, Nick. There's no way to go. Uh, no way to go but forward. All right, so that now I'm on the boat on the lake. Hold it. Uh, okay. Hmm. Gotta think real carefully about what we're about to ask him. One word could be immediately guilty. Okay. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. There was so <laughs> there were so many things wrong. I don't know where to begin. Ah, um, uh, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after eleven when I went out in the boat. By that time, everyone has gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? Uh, I, I, I was looking for something, I found it. Alright. Looking for something. Uh, yeah. I was. Mr. Butts, what was you looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's uh, surprisingly close to the truth in the sense. Yeah, no, it actually, that's kind of true. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped back, slipped the boat back into the rental shop, dog. You went back. So you was in the lake. You were looking, and then you went back. Around what time was this? Well, uh, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. So I guess it was around 12 o'clock. Yeah. You're not sure. Hey! Don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. 
Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked over out in the lake. I didn't see a boat. Uh, okay. Let me ask you repress this. Where did the sound come from? Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about that. I looked out around. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Okay. You heard it, man. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? There wasn't a boat on the lake, right? It has to have been. Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay. Okay. That's just the most important part in this case, but okay. <laughs> So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Nick. Hmm? It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradiction. Sorry, I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I can call my sister. It's okay. Uh, okay, so you was on the boat that night. I was looking for it. And so I quietly slipped back to the... The boat at the rental shop, dog. Then just as I was going home, I heard this bang, and you look out in the rope. You, I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. You looked out over the lake, but you didn't see a boat. But it's, you should have seen a boat because it was this. It was the 1150 where this shot was tucking. Okay, so that didn't work there, but they was a boat. But I didn't see a boat. Okay, I'm just pop a say, I'm already messing up. Okay, so what we have on here? Uh, pistol fire three times. A bullet. Overhead a map. Okay, good. So Larry was been like in the middle. He must have been like in the middle, and he went back, and he heard a gunshot, and there was no boat in the, out there. A lot of was camped out over there, so they both could have probably seen something. Should have at least. Um. See. Taken automatically at twelve fifteen. Larry must have went home when this was taken already. He must have went home when that picture was taken. God. Okay, let's just keep pressing. We're gonna do this one by one. Step by step. Okay, around what time was that? But let's see. I figured I was out searching for an hour. I guess it was around... It was around 12 o'clock, I guess? You're not sure? Okay. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, hold on, I'm stopping the very beginning. Oh, so I think this is where the contradiction lie. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, I can't believe that I didn't catch that the first time. There were three bangs, and we have the pistol that we can show. Alright, so after the single bullet, okay. It's on the last one. I hope it is. After the single shot, gunshot, I went home. I'm gonna present the pistol. The murder weapon, yeah, the pistol.
Oh, 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 I, I, I totally forgot about a lot of this position. I heard two shots, like, I heard two shots, like, uh, two sounds like gunshots just after midnight on 1225. That's probably it. Yeah, I did not, I actually forgot I had that as evidence. I don't know how that, I skipped over that every time. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with this. And I had to, I, by the way, and the reason this episode took a while to come out, because I really had to take a while to uh figure out what to do. I was stuck really hard on this. So, but anyway, let's uh continue. Yeah. <clears throat> well, wait a second, Larry. What? What? You only heard one bang. You are sure. That's what I said. But Miss Lada Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs and the old man just now said the same thing they both heard two gunshots that night huh were you even listening you was paying attention to all to what they said were you paying attention to at all what they said yo nick please huh you know something been bothering me i'm a witness see I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Boy. You don't understand the consequences. But Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How, how can you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Oh, man, you got headphones on. Shit. Order, order, and stop that booing. M Mr. Butts. You were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? That's a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor this shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Uh, yes. yes, yes, Your Honor. Please, please allow this witness to continue his testimony. Bah, nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't. If there was any other way out, just believe me. Well, yeah, he should have told us he would listen to a radio. Especially if we're dealing with sounds or gunshots. Yeah. That's very important. Anyway, what have you heard? It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio. See? I was listening to it real booming loud, like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Well, what he was saying? You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem is here. Judge, can you believe a word that this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection. Objection. Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembered exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, D? Jay? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, 
what this mean is when he heard the sound no music was playing the dj only talks between songs so he could have heard the shock the gunshots from the lake i like to clock examine the witness your honor very well mr right yeah <sighs> i can't believe i'm continuing this charade it's nothing but just nonsense from larry all right Anyway, let's get on with this cross-examination. Yes, it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. You don't have to tell me that. I know. S so you turn your radio on. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there. Alone. On Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio. See? Oh, on button. Oh, hold it. Hold. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? Objection. This has nothing to do with the case, your honor. Objection sustained. The witness will listen to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set set? To that night. I listened to a real booming loud like he said. Real booming. <laughs> real booming loud? Yeah. You know? And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything anything going on outside at all. Oh yeah. Radio was just like dull your sense your 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 hearing. Really? Well, I'm sure I heard the gun, that gunshot. Come on, Larry, you gotta keep your hearing on, man. This case would have been over already if you didn't have any headphones on. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back to real clear to me you know i remember exactly what the dj said when i heard it too and what was that what did she say mr wright please cease these pointless questions what possible good could knowing what a radio dj said to us indeed mr von Calmer has a point i'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care we should care you should care because you know exactly what the DJ say. You can match it up. But I think so. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh. Well, how do you know? How do you know if we don't ask him? Hmm. Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. So that means it was almost Christmas. So that would actually mean that it's... You got on the lake on around the 24th. So it was like, hey, it's almost Christmas. So it's like, hey, it's almost midnight. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. I, I kind of see. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Ron Comer was right. I'm not sure how that helped us. This is the most ludicrous testimony I ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I gotta press it until we get to the bottom of it. So how do I prove that? Uh, let's see. Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. You heard a gunshot when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. So that what makes it not Christmas when the we heard the second gunshot? We talking about the second one, not the first one. So how, how do I um, well let me first let me save. I think my options here is either my options here is either 
probably the second light photo? Let's see, I heard two shots. I heard two shots. I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. And that was from Lada. So, this is before the, the 25th. So it probably has to do the second leak photo. No, it's not. Okay. Okay, cause somewhere. Okay. All right, we're just it's just wishful thinking right now. I'm just I'm just rapidly firing evidence. Oh, okay, it was the, this one. That was my second choice. It was all good. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you are saying is correct? Huh? What's What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, she trying to scare me? You better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, Hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When you heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That's right, damn it. It was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see. What time was the photo taken with the gun trigger, Mrs. Hart's camera? 12.25. Zero zero fifteen. Fifteen minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. Exactly. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, a bold, easy contradiction at that. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness has said he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What What do you mean? Huh? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Bluck claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? He is absolutely correct. He has to be, or I'm, I'm done. Larry, not mistaken, Your Honor. And so is Edgeworth at that, you know? He heard the gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Oh, just like that. Ah. Um. Before midnight. Ooh. Okay, well. If you want evidence, I got evidence. Clearly, I can prove that there was uh, a gunshot before midnight. And that is, uh, I don't know. But we, we're here to figure this out right now. So. Oh, wait. The second late photo shows an empty late taken automatically at 1224 at 1150. The fact that this photo was taken is proof. Look at this photograph. This was taken by a witness yesterday, Miss Lada Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. Yes, but there's nothing on the lake in this... Nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the photograph. It is why the photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor. This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was to go off in response to a loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. It was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words... When Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. 11.50 to be pre precise. Indeed, it would seem to be the case. Then, 
Where did that leave us? Ms. Hart testified that she heard the gunshot after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there was two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Oh. What well, well, hard is it would be? Objection. Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There was no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why? The witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. That's actually pretty true. That's 100%. We've seen it in action, but we, we, we don't have to say anything about that. It's for not hush hush. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 1150 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. I. Do I? Um. Shoot. I. I don't know. Uh, oh, the pistol. The murder weapon got fired three times. Three, not not two, but three. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. And I, I I presented this pistol so many times. I I thought it was it, but here it is. It. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Really? That's the third gunshot. Huh. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Porter, that would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. It does. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. Is this just true? There were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why? I ask you, why? Oh, he asked for more evidence? I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Well, what that means? What are you thinking, Phoenix? What are you thinking? I need to know. I really do. Yeah! Ah, what? What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Uh, a little bit. It's been a minute. Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. Wait, what happened? The murderer in the case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean, the murderer? What do you mean? Maya. Yes. If we don't figure this out now, we never will turn Edgeworth Gate. Alright, so let's figure it out. What happened to Steel Samurai? The uh, Jack Hammer, right? That's the guy. I remember his name. I'm surprised. Jack Hammer. He's, he put the guy Will to sleep. He, he dressed up as his, his uh, superhero. He went all the way to studio number two. He wanted, he wanted to go take out uh, 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 the, 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 the the director or pro no, the producer, and what happened? He got pushed off the leg. So we trying to. So what we saying is, is maybe somehow the the murderer in this case, or I guess maybe the victim in this case was the murderer. I, I, I'm spitballing here, but I don't know. Let me just. I don't know, we figured out. Phoenix, help us. I got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, oh, wait. My voice, wait. <clears throat> right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We already got in a guilty verdict. We got nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Okay. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case 
Hopefully. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tiss, tiss, tiss. So, you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mayu Edgeworth himself. You're wrong. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night. But it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. You keep wagging your finger at me. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. That lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. Bang. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Well, yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. <laughs> after midnight? What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have a photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. You do. Wait a minute. Let me... And it was after midnight. And there was a picture, 11.50, 25 minutes before. I I see what you're getting at. Okay, I, I, I get what he's getting at. I understand. I completely understand it. We have a photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. Oh, wait, that's the judge. The, the timestamp on the photo says 0015. That's, that's, that's 12, uh, that's 1215. For, the, for those who don't know how to read. But Larry had the gunshot 25... Uh, but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then. 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth uh, that could be innocent. <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat were. Uh, the murderer and Haman. Edgeworth and the murderer. Edgeworth and Haman. Well, we all well, we all assumed that it was all Edgeworth and Haman. But what if the what if it's Edgeworth and the murderer? And then Haman is already dead at this point. That has to be it. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After mur the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth, just like the Steel Samurai. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. He disguised himself. What, what is, are you serious? Are you, are you mad? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. L Ludacris! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... Uh, Lada Hart Edgeworth. Well, well sh not them. I, we, I don't know. <clears throat> Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The murderer is the caretaker of the bow shop. That old man. That old man, right there. <laughs> I don't know why, I just felt like pointing at the camera, I don't know. For dramatic effects, I guess. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Haman. The caretaker of the bow shop. Where did he do this? 
There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would we have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? <sighs> May I suggest? The real scene of this crime scene was not on a boat. What? But well then, when did this murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Ah. Uh, well, Larry heard the gunshot when he got back from the lake, right? So it had to be like, I'm assuming. It would have to be at the lake house. I'm hope I'm right, because I have like no more bars left. I'm guilty. We're guilty. We're guilty times two if this happens. Uh, two. Please. Yes. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lived. Or the noodle place. Either or. That way he could have met with the victim without anyone singing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. Smoke. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. Um, it's slightly turned the volume up. I hope. I've been having trouble with my volume settings and some of my other gameplays. So let me just make sure it is a little bit up higher. I I really hope so. It should be good now, but just just in case, you know. Uh, anyway. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he started to hear head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Yeah, the boat shop. Correct, honor. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on the Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sh are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Okay. Here we go. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called called Robert Hamad to his shop. Oh, that's gruesome. This was around 1150. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hamad's coat. He became Robert Hamad. Then, he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Uh, it has to be the, the boat shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both met Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, uh, details, details. Think of something. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer has to fire twice. Uh, because, because the first shot missed? Or to create a witness? To create a witness. Literally, and that's, and that's what happened. I believe he shot twice to create a witness. Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fired one shot. That ensured that anyone who heard the shot will look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then, and then. Then, then the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty, uh, a, a pretty good summary. I see. 
to someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice. To draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then, he put Mr. Haman's wet coat back on the, the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Clear as day. Everyone just so shocked. Everyone so speechless. I understand why. It was, it was an excellent deduction on point. I, I could have done better myself. Bailiff, bring out the witness from the before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly, post haste. Immediately. Oh boy, boy, that, that was a doozy. Oh shoot! All right, let me uh, let me just wind down a little bit. That was a uh, that was a little bit exciting. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mister Edgeworth, please take a stand. Please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yeah, I've been slacking on my judge voice, but I don't know. The judge just kind of just go, hmm, and go, I see, and just ask questions all the time. So it's kind of like, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like dumbing down on the judge voice just for my throat's sake. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I re received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Haman. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake on mid on oh excuse me. At midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he has something very important to discuss with me. <laughs> something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Go ahead, Bailiff. You gotta use everything to find him. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want whom? And I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. I'm glad that was loud and clear right there. All right, so we have a runaway witness. We got a, a runaway witness. Larry just being just everywhere, not being focused, having headphones on. And all this is just this whole case is, oh. But anyway, we got one more day. We got one more day. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And we also had a guilty verdict on top of that. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. 
Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I stifled through this unique testimony, still, he did save us. I just wish our case weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our client. Hey, Edgeworth. You look confused. Um, Mr. Edgeworth. D did you say something? Don't look so pain. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. That's the opposite of relaxing right there. Looks even more pain. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. I'm your lawyer. You better tell me. Edgeworth. No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but well, out with it. Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is it? What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. Oh. A mem oh, the DLs. Is it the DL6? Is it about your pappy? It's probably it. Anyway, to be continued. Uh, okay, so that was the second trial. Honestly, the way how that chase that the way how that case was going, I thought that was going to be the end of it. But we got more. We got more investigation, I guess, and more stuff coming on. So I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to this episode, a uh, part of Phoenix, right? We got some more stuff going on, and it's a whole lot of uh, things to find out. We gotta go and find this care, this this boat caretaker. He ran away for an old sleepy guy. He he got away. He hightailed it pretty quickly. Probably in hiding or something or whatever. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And you guys, uh, if you did, leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helped the, uh, it helped the channel a lot. You guys get to catch all of my videos coming out. And you get to see what all the other cool stuff I'm coming out with. So, you guys take care, enjoy, stay healthy, and you take it easy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.